Hi, I'm Peter from Tips and Tricks HQ. In this video tutorial, I want to introduce you to the concept of custom page templates in WordPress. We'll do this with a simple example using the 2010 theme where we'll create a custom template which will give us the option of changing the way our pages are displayed. So in the 2010 theme, for instance, the default way in which pages are displayed is with the standard sidebar and column width, like you see here. However, the custom page template we will create will give us the option of displaying the page with full width and without a sidebar as shown here. Now, although this particular example may be trivial or can even be done in other ways, the essence of this exercise is to show you how custom page templates work in practice so that you can gain the confidence to create your own templates. Now since I'll be working with a couple of files from the 2010 theme in this example, namely the page.php and style.css files, I'll transfer these from my host to my computer using an FTP client called FileZilla, but you can use any client you wish. So to get the files I want, I've FTP'd to my host and traversed to the 2010 folder within the themes directory. Then it's simply a matter of dragging and dropping the files that you want. So we're almost ready to get started. But before we create our own custom page template file, let's take a brief look at the standard template which comes with the 2010 theme. So as we can see, the standard page template is a file called page.php, which governs how the pages in this theme will be displayed. All themes have a standard page template file like this or similar, which can be located in your themes directory. So for example, when we look at the code of the standard page template for the 2010 theme, we see that it basically controls how pages and their content are displayed by default. And if we scroll down a little bit further, we can also see that this includes the display of the sidebar. And first up, using our preferred editor, let's create a new file and we'll call it page-fullwidth.php. Note the naming convention we are using for our file. This is the recommended convention when creating your own page templates, i.e. always name your files using the page-prefix, followed by the name of your template, which in our case is full width. And now we'll save this new file. Now, when writing your page template, the mandatory requirement is to put the template name at the top of your page as follows. So for example, we called our template full width. And this comment with the template name is very important because what you enter here will later be displayed in your WordPress admin panel when you are selecting a template for a page. And next, we'll simply copy and paste the contents of the standard template page.php file, which we transferred over earlier, into our new template file. So, we'll select the code beginning from just after the comments to the end of the file and we'll right click and copy and then we'll simply paste this code into our own new file. So essentially what we're going to do is modify this original code to achieve our desired outcome of a full page width display with no sidebar. Okay so we're ready to start making our changes. So first up Let's look at where the sidebar is being displayed and we'll delete that from our code. So if we look carefully in our code, we'll see a line, the second last line here which says get underscore sidebar function. So what we'll do is delete this, so we'll highlight that line and 
delete and now let's save the file and we'll see what effect our change will have on our page display. So now going back to our FTP client window, let's transfer the page-fullwidth.php file which we just created from our desktop to our host by dragging and dropping the file like so. So after logging into our WordPress admin page, we will click on the pages menu. And then we'll choose to edit the about page for our demonstration. Once in the edit window, go to the page attributes section which can be found on the right hand side and click the template drop down box. And as you can see, our new template called Full Width is now available for selection. So we'll go ahead and select our template and then we'll update our changes. And now let's look at a preview of our page by clicking on the Preview Changes button. And as you can see, the sidebar is now gone. So now we're back in our custom template file which we named as page-fullwidth.php and what we need to do next is to modify the width of our content so that it renders as full width and fills the space where the sidebar used to be. To do that we need to find where in the code is a div element which refers to the content and then we want to make changes to the way the content element is displayed. And as we can see, there is a content div ID a few lines from the top as highlighted here. So what we'll do is add the following entry to this line. We'll say class equals and in inverted commas full width. Now you can choose any name for your class, but full width makes sense for our demonstration. So now we can go ahead and save our file. The next thing we need to do is to edit the style.css file which we transferred over at the beginning of this tutorial. Here we need to add an entry for the CSS class which we called full width in the page template file moments ago. Although it doesn't really matter where you place your entry, try to find a suitable place which doesn't interfere with other CSS code. So in our case, we'll choose the end of the layout section to add our entry. So let's add the following line which will set the width of the content to be displayed at 100%. And now let's go ahead and save our file. And finally Using our FTP client again, let's transfer the two files which we just modified from our desktop to our host. So let's select the page-fullwidth.php file and transfer that across. And we'll say OK. And we'll do the same for the style.css. And now finally, let's refresh our blog HTML page to see the changes. And as you can see, our page now displays with 100% full width. So now you have a basic understanding of the functionality of custom page templates, but more importantly I hope this simple example has at least inspired you to dig deeper and experiment with your own templates. So that concludes this tutorial, thanks for your time and see you next time.